Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Friday of the ninth week in Ordinary Time, but today is also a solemnity. Today is the solemnity of the most sacred heart of Jesus. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first, and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And again another passage says, They will look upon him whom they have pierced. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> well, on this most sacred heart of Jesus, we do take time to focus upon this one beautiful element of our devotion. Now, when we talk about the sacred heart of Jesus, we are not talking about uh, the actual organ that uh, is in our body that uh, pumps the blood through the veins and arteries, etc. The heart has always been seen at the very center of a person's being. Their heart is kind of the core of who they are. And so the heart has always been seen as a special focal point. Whenever we want to uh, focus upon uh, the, uh, the interior life of an individual, and so we have the most sacred heart of Jesus and the most immaculate heart of Mary as two of the uh, devotions that we focus upon. And today, uh, we have the most sacred heart of Jesus, uh, a focal point that has always been a part especially of many religious orders from the earliest days of the church. And then in the 17th century, it was St. Margaret Mary Alacoque that really popularized the, uh, the devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus. And this has always been kind of uh, connected, as we see in our scripture, with the piercing of his side, the piercing basically of his heart. And um, that, of course, is symbolic, the piercing of his heart and water and um, blood flowing out, again, symbolic of baptism and the Eucharist, that the heart of Jesus has always been poured out into the church in those particular ways. And when we think of the most sacred heart of Jesus, uh, it was Pope Pius XII who had us look at three separate um, aspects of the most sacred heart of Jesus. <clears throat> the first, of course, was his divine love, the love that animated him as the second person of the Godhead, the love relationship between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that perpetuated the unity of the Trinity. And so his divine love <clears throat> is a love that is poured out to us in a powerful way. There is also <clears throat> the, um, uh, the love that, that basically filled his human uh, side, his human indwelling. And um, that was the love that, that caused him to feel and to love uh, as the incarnate Son of God. And that is the love that really, uh, again, we could see as he um, poured out his uh, life into those in need. Uh, we see, for example, uh, the love that he had as he gave himself beautifully to uh, uh, those around him. And in a couple of places, for example, uh, Matthew talked about um, that burning love. He called it compassion, the compassion that Jesus had for uh, those around him. 
And so it's that burning love that infused his soul that enriched him, enlightened him, and uh, carried him forward so powerfully as he continued to live out what the uh, what the I had been called to as the Lord of life. And the third part was his sensible love. This is just that uh, that normal part of his human com- uh, component, the the love that uh, that he had for those around him, the love that he had for his parents, the love he had for the other disciples. And just that 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 human love that dwells within each of his uh, of our hearts. So these three aspects of Christ's love is something that were uh, kind of incorporated uh, by the Holy Father Pope Pius the Twelfth into this devotion. But the Sacred Heart has always been seen saturating our scriptures with the understanding of that heart that reached out, the heart that was a heart of compassion, the heart that, that uh, led him to the cross, the heart that in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, and Father, not, not my will, but thine be done. The heart that as he looked down from the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And as we see in Scripture, um, this was something that really impacted Uh, John, because in his gospel, he refers to himself. He says, an eyewitness has testified and his testimony is true. And he goes on, he knows that he is speaking the truth so that you also may come to believe. And he's talking about the fact that he was there when the soldiers came to the thieves that were on either side of Jesus And seeing that they were still alive, they broke their legs. And the reason the legs were broken is that the legs were the only thing that really kept them alive when they were crucified. Crucifixion would cause a compression on the chest, and you would uh, basically uh, just be um, suffocated because your ribcage would come down on your lungs and you could not breathe. So the only way that crucified individuals could breathe was to push up with their legs. And so they would keep pushing up with their legs as painful as it was in order to breathe. And so these two uh, thieves on the cross obviously were still alive in some way, shape, or form, uh, probably in not real good shape, but still breathing. And so they broke the legs. That way they would be suffocated and uh, they would die. But they came to Jesus and and noticed that he was already dead. And again, uh, remember uh, at uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Jesus gave up his spirit. He willingly gave his life. It was not taken from him. He gave it. And so out of that, the apostle John says that he saw this happen, but instead they pierced his heart. And again, when they did that, blood and water flowed out. And These were scriptures, again, that were fulfilled by the actions of the soldiers. That in one passage, it basically said that not not a bone of it will be broken from Psalm 34, 21. That this would be something that they would not have happened. It would not, they would not break any bones. And also they will look upon him whom they have pierced, Zechariah was a prophet who brought that about. So again, this idea of the sacred heart is one where we realized that even to the very end, Jesus poured out his life for the life of the world. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, on this solemnity, let's be sure to take some time to reflect upon the most sacred heart of Jesus. The beautiful thing is we have an entire month. The month of June is also dedicated to the sacred heart. Many times, and you may have been among those that prepared for this particular solemnity by a novena, but even if you didn't use the novena up to the sacred heart of Jesus, perhaps during the month of June, this would be a beautiful time to make that novena again one that you would use to, again, think about the most sacred heart of Jesus. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit. Amen.